Hello, welcome everyone. It's another live lesson from the Digital DJ Tips Studio. In the next 45 minutes or so, we're gonna have another show where we talk DJing. We answer your questions if you're one of the community members who's live here. Could be serious stuff about your DJ gear. We've got the, uh, the little, um, I'll take my book and headphones off it, the little uh, Flex 4 set up here today so we could talk about this. We could also talk about your music. We could talk about getting gigs. We could talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're here for you today. So if you're just joining us, the first time welcome along it's good to have you here i hope you enjoy the next 45 minutes or so and if you're watching the recording you'll be watching it either on our website on youtube or on facebook ask questions underneath my team and i will be here to help you so what's been going on in the world of djing this week quite a lot actually we've been uh, We've been finally told that the Rekordbox mobile DJ app version four is now available, which gives you a Android version of the version four app that's been available on iOS for a little while. And that means that you can actually DJ from this new app with, for instance, the Flex 4 that I've got set up in front of me with your phone or your tablet and without having to have anything else uh, on there to do that. You haven't been able to do that on Android yet until now. So that's uh, certainly something that's going on. Are you looking to DJ on your phone or tablet? Certainly there uh, is a lot of that around. Uh, let us know how you're doing it. Let us know whether you're interested in, uh, in that new app or indeed whether you've tried it. Uh, what else is going on in the DJ world this week that we might want to talk about? So over on Digital DJ Tips, we've been talking about the uh, Engine DJ improvements. Engine, Engine DJ is a platform that is used by the Denon DJ and Newmark Mixstream products. And the uh, article we've published has done really well, actually. A lot of people seem to be quite inspired by Engine DJ. We published an article called Seven surprising things you may not know about Engine DJ. And so maybe you want to go and have a look at that uh, and catch up on what's going on on that platform. It is a pretty cool platform, I have to say. Uh, and so we thought we'd give it some love. Uh, however, the reason that I've got this uh, set up in front of me, uh, the, uh, the mix stream, is that we are currently, uh, not the mix stream, the, uh, the Flex 4, is that we are currently making a course with this, uh, with this controller. So we are making a course uh, with not only this, but the Flex 10, the Quad, the Nexus gear, the Pioneer A9 mixer, any Pioneer gear that works with Rekordbox, we are currently filming a massive course called Rekordbox 6 Made Easy. You can see my uh, teaching screen there now. So I've currently got uh, the whole thing set up here. So if you've got any questions about Rekordbox or about how to use Pioneer DJ's gear or software, I do have that set up in front of me in order to, to chat to you about that as well but it's over to you. I'm basically, you know, as I say to you guys every week, I've been working very hard in the studio as I always do all day, putting my mind to all kinds of things. Today we've been uh, looking at, uh, as I say, record box stuff, uh, but this is the time when I just enjoy kicking back and chatting DJing with all of you. So thank you for being here and let's get started. So do you think, says Sean on YouTube, the processors inside Den and DJ standalones would be powerful enough to process stems as a possible further feature, future feature. So if you're new to digital DJing and some of the features of it, one of the things that's in the software is something called Stems. For instance, it's in the record box software that I had on the screen just then. So Stems is where you can separate the drums, the vocals, and the instruments. It's the area that I'm waving my mouse around at the moment in order to have instant acapellas, instant instrumentals, instant drum tracks, and so on. And if you're in the effects mode on this particular software, look in the top right hand corner, you can also put effects on just the instruments, just the vocals, or just the drums in real time. So it's a really powerful way of DJing. You know, you could instant, firstly, you can get acapellas of tracks that you couldn't get them off before, which is pretty cool. But then you can start doing stuff on the decks in real time and making your own mashups and so on. And of course, the thing is with DJ software, so this is now in Serato, it's now coming to Tractor, it's in DJ Pro AI, it's in Rekordbox, um, it's in Virtual DJ. It's so the thing with, record, with DJ software is that it can get there first. 
and it can get there fastest. So what happened was, you know, the old fashioned Pioneer DJ decks, um, and I've got some over here. I say old fashioned because they are catching up now, but you know, this kind of, oh, camera's not working. Oh yeah, it is working, there we go. So this kind of deck here, the CDJ3000s and the A9 mixer, they're currently actually pretty powerful, right? This, these things can do an awful lot of stuff that you can also do on DJ software nowadays. However, guess what? Just when, and also of course, Denon DJ's engine powered gear and the mix stream engine powered gear can also do that as well. And guess what? As soon as standalone gear that doesn't need a laptop in the DJ booth almost catches up, closes the gap almost to nothing, on software, bang, real-time stems arrives. And that's not in any of that gear. And so it's a really good question. Is it likely that it can come to that kind of gear? Are the processes powerful enough in the current lineup of non-laptop gear? And in this instance, the question is about engine DJ uh, in order to do that. My answer to that is, the processes in those units, I am gonna guess are not as powerful as they are in computers. However, there are ways and means of doing this. In Serato, you can analyze your tunes ahead of time for the stems, for vocals, instruments, and drums. And then Serato will play them almost like their normal tunes. And so you can use stems in Serato on pretty low powered laptops. So were the engine DJ engineers to implement something like that, I think it could work in that gear. So watch this space, we'll let you know as soon as we know any more about that, but I certainly think they would like to have that working. Brian says, Phil, I've been interested in DJing for years. Is it better to start off on older equipment or to start with something a bit modern? Pricing is such a big factor with everything today being so expensive. Right, two parts to this. One, should you start to learn DJing on two turntables and, you know, an old fashioned mixer, this is my very first mixer, in order to learn the right way, and I'm using right in inverted commas there. And then move on to the more modern way of DJing with controllers and so on. And the second thing is the expense. How much should you spend when you're just starting to learn DJing? So let's answer both of those things. The first point is no, you don't need to learn on vinyl, you don't need to learn with turntables, you don't need to learn with old fashioned mixes and so on. The point is that if you learn the right things in the right order, you can learn on anything. So for instance, here, here set up on the, um, on the desk here, I've got the Flex 4 from Pioneer DJ. And if you want to learn on something like this, even though it's got hot cues and pad effects and beat jumps and samplers and real-time stems and sync and looping and active sensor and all, you know, all the stuff that you can do on here, if you want to learn on something like this and you want to learn DJing properly, you can. And it's the order you learn things in that matter. Now, in our courses, the way we teach DJing is we get you grounded on the gear itself, understanding the techie stuff. In other words, what do all the little buttons, technical bits and pieces do? Then we move on to the music, teaching you about collecting the right music, about preparing the music, about getting your playlists right, because unless you've got the gear and you understand the gear and, you haven't, and you've got the music, you can't do the next bit. The next bit is the mixing, right? This is where most DJ schools start. Hey, we'll teach you how to mix, but anyway, it's another story. You need the other stuff first. Just trust us on that. The next bit is the mixing. So the key here, the absolute key here is to learn in the right order. You need to learn how the beats work, how the bars work, how the counting works, and how manual beat mixing works. You don't need to be brilliant at it, but if you don't understand it, there's no point going any further with gear like this because you'll get confused and you'll start to rely on the gear. Whereas the way we teach, you will, when you start hitting the wonderful sync buttons, to sync everything up in your DJ software, you will understand what you just did. And if it goes wrong, you'll know how to correct it. So it's a little bit like learning, I guess, you know, a modern way of talking about this would be learning to ride an e-bike before you learn to ride a real bike. There's no point. Learn the, 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 learn the basics before you learn the modern stuff. So the way we teach DJing and the course that we teach it in for most people is, is called the Complete DJ Course, which you will find over on the website. The way we teach DJing in our Complete DJ Course is very simple. We start off by teaching you the gear and the, and the music, then we teach you the very, very basics. Uh, and then when you've got the basics now, we start to say, okay, now let's start talking about hot cues and loops and sync and all that and beat gridding and all the stuff you get in modern DJ gear. So as long as you learn 
in that order. Doesn't matter if you learn on, doesn't matter if you learn on your phone, really. The second point, how much money to spend. This is an easy one. We recommend any new DJ buy a reasonably cheap controller, not a tiny one like this. You can get things like this for 80 quid, you know, not something like this. These, these are actually really useful, these are good, but only if you know what you're doing with it, only if you've, if you've learned on something else. So we recommend that you spend, I don't know, maybe 300 on something like, funnily enough, the setup I've got going on in front of me now, which is the, uh, which is the Flex 4 from Pioneer DJ. And it comes with the software that you can see on the screen and it's got everything you need to DJ. It's a fantastic, absolutely fantastic piece of gear. It lasts you for years and years and years. When you outgrow it, you'll know what you want to buy next. So when you move from spending three figures to four figures on DJ gear, for God's sake, know what you're gonna be spending the money on. Because the problem is you could spend the money on something like this, right? This is gonna cost you the price of a small car. But you might find that it's not right for you, that you'd actually be much better off using something like this. So the second part of that, and the second reason why that's such a good idea is that you're probably gonna to wanna to keep this. So let's say you bought something like this and two years later, you're absolutely hooked on DJing and you do indeed go out, borrow the money, get a second mortgage and invest in club gear, right? I'm gonna wager that you're gonna to wanna to keep this because it's good for smaller gigs, it's good for practicing at home and it's good if that stuff throws a wobbly and breaks down. You've got this in your bag, the show carries on. So as a backup controller as well. And then of course, if you decide that DJing isn't for you, you've only blown 300, not 8,000 <laughs> on your DJ gear, right? So uh, in the answer to the second part of your question, definitely don't spend more than $300 or something on a basic controller. Now on Digital DJ Tips, we have lots and lots of advice on how to choose a basic controller. So head over to the website at digitaldjtips.com, go to the blog, and you'll find all that stuff there. Now we've got the gear review section where you can dr drill down by the price that you want to spend. In this instance, you're looking at somewhere around here um, and you can have multiple ones of these selected as well. So if you think I want to spend up to 500, here we go. You start to see everything we've got there and there's the controller that we were just talking about, reviewed. They've all got videos on here. Uh, and also in here, you can find our roundup. So if you go to the search box and just type in the word roundup in one word, you'll start to see all our roundups of equipment and in here you'll find roundups of controllers as well. Uh, or just another nice way of looking through all this stuff is just to go to the blog and to start browsing down because the blog's got this nice function where it just keeps um, going when you press this latest button here and it'll just keep going down and down and down and down and in here you'll find write-ups of all kinds of stuff including the roundups I was just talking about. Every year we do new roundups in here that give you the controllers at different price points and so on. Uh, so you've got a little bit of time to spend, this is where to do it and this is the exact one you would want. The eight best DJ controllers under $500 for 2023. Go take a look. And of course, video and written content there. Thanks for the question. Good luck on your DJ journey. You've wanted to do this for too long. Do not hang about, Brian. Get on with it. Uh, the next question is from Jermaine. Hello, Jermaine, who says, I just bought my first set of PA speakers and I just bought the poles as well, right, to put the speakers on. Is it okay to leave the speakers on the poles with a big dust cloth over them? Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Don't see any problem with doing that. I guess you mean just like, before the gig or that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, leave them on your poles, they'll be fine, they'll be safe. Poles quite often have locks that you can put on them to make sure everything stays safe. Definitely if yours have got those, then use them. Uh, so do you think, uh, says, you don't like my music, that other than Instagram, there's a, another cost-effective way to promote your own music? Oh, right, well, promoting your own music is a big question. And so you can use SoundCloud, put your tracks on SoundCloud and put some work in there. That's a good place to promote your own music. TikTok's obviously a massive platform. You know, so many tracks have broken through on TikTok. Try and get it onto Spotify and onto Spotify playlists and onto Beatport as well. So, you know, it's, it's certainly don't only use one of these platforms, I would say. Use as many of them as you can. Uh, so um, I'm here, says DJ King Shamek. Uh, I'm here to get a uh, take on Serato's stems and how much space it uses. We've already talked about stems a bit today, haven't we? Real time separation of vocals, drums, melody, and, uh, and bass lines. So Serato gives you two choices. 
Choice number one, it will analyze them on the fly. If you've got a fast computer, that's good. And that means that you don't need to have an awful lot of space, it just does it when it needs it. Choice number two in Serato is he has a folder you can drag them into a playlist or a crate ahead of time. And that crate will analyze them in the background and it will split every track you drag in there into five, basically, the original track, and then drums, bass, melody, vocals. Now that's really cool, but it needs five times the space. So there's a trade-off there. Low, low um, processor power, lots of space, it'll work. Um, haven't got such a big hard drive, but a very fast processor, that will work as well. So there's, there's a few ways you can look at doing this. And so uh, it just depends upon your computer really which way works the best for you. Right, keep, keep your questions coming in please people. For some reason I've just been kicked out of the chat, but that's no problem. I know how to get back into it. I'm just typing the username and password back in uh, as we speak in order so I can see what you're saying. Uh, please only ask your questions once though. That's what this wonderful thing here is for. Keep calm and ask once. Uh, one of our great students uh, made that for us uh, because if you ask your question lots of times, I won't answer it and it's rude. It's like shouting out in class, I see your hand, but just, please just ask the once. I can never answer all the questions. I do try my hardest though. Right, so AXO Official says, I have my big setup as well. So that's a very good point about keeping your small setup. We were talking about keeping, uh, keeping your, um, you know, your first ever controller um, after you have upgraded to something else, right? AXO says, I have um, kept mine. Uh, and the exact gear is a DDJ400, very similar to this one. And Axo says, I use it for remote streams, for travel, and for small gigs. I love my standalone gear, but sometimes you just need something small and easy. I agree completely. Uh, hello, Twitch family, Earl Whiff, and DJ Mark in the Dark, and Dr. Clara, good to see you. Uh, Ramey on YouTube says, when using or bringing a PA speaker to a DJ booth for a gig that doesn't provide DJ booth monitors, What's the best placement for them to optimize hearing the music? Right, so this is exactly the same whether you're at home or whether you are um, in, a, in, a, in a, a venue or whatever. The best placement for them is exactly how I've got mine set up here. So you want the speakers to be with the tweeters pointing at your ears. So if you can't have, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd have to have them up here to have them right, right at my ears. So mine are angled upwards. The tweeters pointing at your ears and you want a triangle between you and the speakers. And that way you're gonna be immersed in the full stereo. Now these kinds of speakers are near field monitors. These are designed to be near to your ears. So I don't know what kind of speakers exactly you're using, but in, anyway, the point is you want them as close to you as possible because that means that you're gonna hear the sound with the minimum delay. Unbelievably, unbelievably to some, uh, unless you've actually experienced it, which I have countless times, when the speakers become more than a few meters away from you, you can hear the delay compared to your headphones and it's, it does your head in. So you want them close because it means beat mixing is easier and all that kind of thing. So basically close to you and pointing at your ears is the best place to have your speakers set up. Right, more of your questions. This one is from uh, Adam, who says, uh, I'm in Denver. Hello, Denver. That's where Lauren is, our, um, our, our fantastic moderator. Well, she's much more than a moderator, but she's more than likely moderating this chat right now. So thanks, Lauren. Um, so uh, what are the chances that Pioneer introduces a small battery-powered controller to compete compete with Denon and Newmark. I'm not so sure they will, you know. Um, I've got the Newmark controller here and seeing it's quite new, shall I just run and get it, show you people. Uh, you might not have seen this, so I'm gonna grab it and show you this controller here. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic controller. I think this is gonna do so well. Uh, this is the Newmark Mix Stream Pro Go. So this has got everything you need. It's got a built-in operating system, so there's no need for any laptop. It's got built-in speakers, so there's no need to take speakers with you. It's got a built-in battery that lasts about four hours, so you can DJ for quite a long time without plugging it into the mains. You can plug storage into the back, so you can have an awful lot of music on there, but it can also stream music using its built-in Wi-Fi directly from Tidal, Beatport, BeatSource, and SoundCloud. So that's a fantastic unit, and you know, it's a, it'll cost you three figures, not four figures. So it's an incredible piece of kit, and I think they'll do really Really well. I've got no idea if Pioneer will bring out something like that, uh, but the truth is, for my kind of guess, no, I don't think they will. I don't know why, I just don't think they will. Um, so, uh, so yeah, well, let's see. Uh, right, so um, let's see what else we've got coming in here. Um, keep asking your questions, by the way, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. This is from Jason, who says, hi, Phil, the functions on my main two controllers are starting to fail and I'm looking at purchasing a new one. 
I like the look of the Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 10, but it's probably more controller than I need. Is there any news on a possible Flex 8 coming? So again, just off camera, I've got the Flex 10 here, and the reason I've got the Flex 10 here is that I have been filming with it today. This is a Pioneer DJ Flex 10, incredible controller. It's a replacement for the DDJ 1000. And what they've added to it on top of what the DDJ 1000 does is stems control with dedicated controls for stems, and unbelievably, a DMX control on the back. So you can plug your lights directly into it and have the record box software working your lights for you directly from your DJ platform. So you can do that yourself. Um, I don't think they're gonna make a Flex 8. A Flex 8 would be a two channel version, right? I just don't think they're gonna do it. Uh, the DDJ 800 is still a great controller, uh, which is a two channel controller that is professional. So you might wanna look at the DDJ 800, Jason. Uh, but I get the feeling that two channel DJ controllers are just not very popular out there uh, when you get past this kind of controller, right? So this kind of controller is great. This kind of controller um, works fine for two channel because they're, you know, beginners, two channels is more than enough. Um, but once you get past the beginner entry level units, I just get the feeling that the DJs expect to have more than four channels. Now, the funny thing is I was speaking to someone at a DJ show many years ago now who said, you know, we make four channel controllers and we know that our users don't use the four channels. They only use two. 80% of our users only use two channels, uh, but they want the four channels. And that's fair enough because a lot of these units around the back, I mean, this one hasn't because it's a very basic unit. There it goes. Camera's not quite straight there. There we go. This has just got very, very basic controls around the back. Um, however, uh, a lot of these, you know, the, the better units like this, they have all kinds of uh, extra inputs at the back so you can plug in stuff which is um, like CDJs and samplers and keyboards and have stuff running with Ableton so you're playing like a live hybrid with your DJ set and you need the extra channels for that. So just because you don't DJ day to day with four channels, I think the thing is that people when they're starting to spend that kind of money, they just want the, the, the potential flexibility of extra channels. So yeah, I think that's, that's kind of the way the, way, um, the the way the DJ mind works. And so I just don't see much use. I mean, for instance, the Denon DJ Prime 2, I don't believe is still being made. They're very cagey about it. I guess that's fair enough, but I don't think they're still making that. I think they're pushing the Prime 4, which is the four channel version of that, a little bit more uh, for those reasons. So no, I don't see a Flex 8 coming, unfortunately. Um, but I might be wrong. I do like to be proved wrong on these things that, uh, that people want. Um, right, so what other live questions can I jump on and help you with today? This is from Tony. Hi, Phil. I'm having problems with the new update of the Denon DJ software. There's no horizontal waveforms and the decks are jumping. So I haven't had a chance to play with the new update of the Engine DJ software. Uh, I would be surprised if the horizontal waveforms don't work. Normally, I I'm, for memory, you hold down shift and press view. Hold down shift and then press and hold view or just tap it, I can't remember which, and that should switch from horizontal to vertical and back again. So do have a go at that. Uh, Dex jumping, I can't help you with. Obviously, that's, that's a fault, that shouldn't happen. Um, I'm just gonna run off camera, and I'm gonna grab my water from here, because I forgot to bring it, and I'm absolutely thirsty. So, sorry guys, I need a drink, and I'm not scared to admit it. Oh, that's better. Right, this is from, I like this kind of question because it's completely different. Uh, this is from, <laughs> he says, having not been able to find the question again. Uh, he's talking about a, a new DJ, uh, I'll paraphrase it because I can't see it. Uh, a new DJ wants you to know what kind of desk to get to DJ on. It's a great question because it's really, really important. We actually run whole articles on this in the past. The most important thing is your Pour back, because you need to have something that's higher than a table. So one really good hack, your DJ controller came in a box, right? Put the box on your table and put the DJ controller on your box. Uh, your back will thank you for it. The, the height you really want is about kitchen work surface height, right? So I've seen DJs, in fact, I've done it myself, using 
ironing boards to do this with because you can adjust the height right and get exactly how you want it now it's a bit wobbly but if you're using hey if you're using a controller on it an ironing board is not the end of the world because you know uh, a controller is not doesn't care if you wobble it about it's not going to jog the records or anything so i've seen people using ironing boards to dj on probably a little bit more professional would be something like this this is a udg stand that folds up that we've got in the background here. And so you can carry it with you to gigs and so on. And then it's very neat and it unfolds and you can set up like that. Um, and this desk here was actually custom made for me. Um, I actually got it a tiny bit too small, I have to be honest, because I do struggle with uh, four CDJs and a mixer on it. Uh, but anyway, it's a very nice desk and I had this custom built. Cost about the equivalent of $1,000, which uh, was, was a bargain really. It's been here for many years and will probably outlive me. So you can get custom stuff made, uh, but it doesn't really matter. You know, in the old days when we were playing vinyl, of course it mattered, you needed it to be rock solid. But nowadays, just as long as it's the right height and it's not gonna tumble over, it's gotta be stable, you're all right. Use what you've got, I would say. Uh, and like I say, I've even used ironing boards before. I've seen DJs using keyboard stands as well. So that could be a way of, uh, of, of doing it. And also decorating, you know, decorating stands for putting the paste on your wallpaper before you hang it. Anything really that can get you that height. I'm a big fan of using what you've got at home and using what you can find at the beginning because you don't want to let stuff like that stop you, um, you know, getting on with your DJ, do you? Uh, right, so what else have we got here? Um, let's see, I saw uh, a comment from my friend, I think it was from Ken, who I, it is, hello Ken, uh, on YouTube, who says, I hope you're well, Phil. Uh, I met you at a certain football game, at a certain football club. Uh, I hope you're well, young lad. Uh, I had a great day and it was good to meet a legend. Oh, come on, you mean you met one of the players after the game, did you, Ken? Um, no, I did bump into Ken in the, uh, in the corridor on the way up to the stands at a Manchester United game last weekend and uh, it was a very good game and the first game that my son has ever been to. So to see 75,000 fans watch a victory was perfect for my little boy. So and it was also lovely to meet you, Ken. Uh, so thank you for the comment uh, and for, for following through on your word, because you did say you'd do that. Right, okay, this is from Zombie Pixel US, who says, I'm recording my shows for the first time. I've never talked over my mixes. I'm not sure what I'd talk about, but it seems like the thing to do is keep listeners engaged. Any tips? Right, yes, I have got tips. So let's talk about what you should say over your mixes. So, you know, old fashioned DJs would be like, well, that was the birdie song and coming up next, it's Billy Joel, you know. You shouldn't be doing stuff like that, I don't think. Um, however, never say never, it might work for you. I think the most important thing to do is interact with people who are watching your live stream. So if you're talking about live streams here, which I think you are, because you're talking about recording them, I would say the important thing is to, if people are there, if people are in the chat, if people are commenting on your mixings, to make sure you mention them by name and look at the camera when you do so. People get a thrill at that kind of thing. I was many, many generations ago, I was a local newspaper journalist. And my editor said to me, the point of local newspapers is because people want to see themselves and people they know reflected back at them. They want to see their pictures, they want to read their names in print. If that happens once a year, they'll buy the paper every other week. And it's the same with people who comment on your live streams and on your shows. They've come, they've commented, they've said something, and you should call that out. So really it's about interacting with the audience, I think. That's the biggest thing you can do. I think it's important to say who you are and what you're doing and what people should expect at the beginning of the show. And then throughout the show, say it a few more times. So that's, you know, if you said it four times in an hour and a half, that's great. At the end, you should thank people for being there and you should say when you're gonna be doing it next. You know, if you did all those things, if you said what the show is, what to expect, uh, and repeated that a few times, if you said hello to everyone who said hello to you, if you read out anything funny, if you ask for people's birthdays or shout outs at the beginning, then you've got stuff to talk about as well if people do that, then you probably find you've got enough to say. And of course, if there's a record or two that you really love, or there's a reason for playing a particular track, then, then do mention it, but don't think you have to like do the old fashioned lame kind of saying what every track is. Everyone's got Shazam nowadays and DJing's moved on a bit from that. I think we can probably all agree about that, right? Anyway, good luck, uh, Zombie Pixel US, with your, sh your live show. I hope it works out well for you. Um, they, it's great fun live streaming, done a lot of it myself. Uh, so, William says, ever since I moved from vinyl to digital, I've been missing the view of my covers. 
Uh, I, is there software that attaches an image to an MP3 or a WAV track that's previously been recorded? Thanks. Yes, there is. You can do it in nearly all editing software. You can do it in iTunes. You can do it in nearly all DJ software. Or you can use something like um, uh, it's MP3 Tag. I think there's a piece of software called MP3 Tag. Uh, I'm going to go onto the internet now and do what my production team always say. Phil, don't do that kind of thing. Drives us mad. Uh, but hey, I want to share this with you. Uh, there you go. I found it straight away. It worked this time. So MP3 Tag. Uh, this kind of software, you can see there's, a, there's actually on the screenshot they're using there, they've got artwork attached. Interestingly, if I go and grab the record box software, just because it's what I've been playing with, um, I say playing with, I'm recording a serious course with it. Uh, the Recordbox software that I'm using at the moment in the course that we're recording, Recordbox 6 Made Easy, uh, and show you this. Recordbox is actually quite good at this kind of thing. So I've set my Recordbox uh, software here to library mode. And as you can see, we can see the artwork. It's being displayed to us down here. Just the kind of, the kind of top of each of the record um, case labels, if you like, the record um, covers. Uh, but Recordbox has got another mode at the top here that I can click in, which shows me a smaller, but at least full-sized version of there. But in Recordbox as well, you can click on the sign and get the information about the song. And once you do that, you've got a whole big artwork thing here. And in, the, in here, you can upload new artwork or you can delete the artwork that's currently attached to any particular track. So you can go through your collection doing this. And the best place to find artwork is just any search engine, really, uh, because all you've got to do is search for the name of the track that you want, to, uh, you want to find and the word cover. So for instance, let's just get a search engine open here and, um, and I will uh, show you how to do that. So head to your search engine and when you're there, Type in, let's just type in, I don't know, God knows why I'm typing in Ed Sheeran, but Ed Sheeran, um, overpass, uh, oh, it's graffiti, isn't it? Overpass graffiti, that's right. So I will type in that, cover, and then images, it's giving me cover versions, there we go, and here's the cover. So that one there might be the one I want, right? So I would just download that to my desktop, head back to my Recordbox software, and attach it by using the upload button there to the artwork. And then it would appear every time I not only uh, had the track on my um, library there, but also, for instance, if I were DJing with it and my DJ um, decks were set to do that, it could show on the decks when I loaded it. So for instance, if I load, oh, this is a different track here. I load a track there. If my decks happen to be, uh, you know, slightly more expensive than the one I've got here, um, the middle of the jog wheel can sometimes show you the artwork and the Flex 10 that I held up a minute ago is a good example of a piece of DJ software that can do that for you. Right then. Really enjoying this today. Great questions. Thank you, people. It's really good at the end of a long day's work to talk DJing. And I hope if you're watching the recording that you're also enjoying this. Remember, you can still ask questions underneath if you are watching the recording. Uh, let's grab a question then from uh, Phil, who says, I'm confused. Hello, Phil on Facebook. Uh, Recordbox holds your thumb drive hostage. Nothing like Serato. Also, when I analyze my tracks, I get folders with every track I analyze. I still don't get it. Um, so it's just a case of understanding what your DJ software is doing, Phil. Recordbox will not move your music uh, unless it's one very specific circumstance. It will only index your music. Your music will stay where you put it. So if you are putting your music onto a thumb drive to DJ with on Recordbox, that thumb drive is not your master collection of your music. Your master collection is on your laptop where you put it. Recordbox will not mess with your music. It has its own database with the things it wants to know about your music. And the stuff you export has been, for, uh, has been optimized to work that when you plug it into Recordbox standalone gear, such as for instance, the CDJs in a club or whatever, then you get all the great functions of Recordbox. Like you get your standalone beat grids and your cues and your loops and all the stuff that Recordbox did for you when you were analyzing will now work on standalone gear away from the laptop. It's a different kind of software to Serato and it needs to do things in a different kind of way in order to work properly. But it won't move your music ever unless, and there is one specific circumstance when it will, and again, only if you tell it to, unless you're using Recordbox's cloud library functions where you subscribe to the software and you use Dropbox plus Recordbox Cloud to get your music into the cloud so that you can 
do it on your phone or use it on a computer at work as well as at home uh, or indeed log in to your collection via Pioneer's Most Modern Gear and DJ without even taking your music with you in clubs and so on. But that is a niche case and if you're using that, you know you're using it. So I think, Phil, you, you just need to take a deep breath and read the manual a bit and understand what it's doing because Recordbox can be set up to do whatever you want, but it's different to Serato. It won't do things in the same way because it's got a, a wider scope. It does more things. So it is worth trying to understand it. Uh, of course, if you really don't like it, it seems like you already know Serato, switch to that, which is also wonderful software. Uh, so our record box, <laughs> lots of people talking about record box, our record box stems, usable, they sound a bit ropey to me. Uh, they're all right, I think it's a version one and I think they'll start to improve them quite quickly now, but I'm, I'm not that impressed with the sound of record box stems, I have to say. Uh, Mika says, I know about the free download, but I bought the book Rock the Dance Floor uh, and it's a great read, very informative. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, Mika. So this is our book. Good good segue. I didn't pay Mika for that. Uh, good segue into this. This is our book, Rock the Dance Floor. If you head to Amazon, have a look at the reviews. I won't, uh, I won't go on about it. You can read what other people have to say about it. But it's basically our book that helps you learn how to DJ from scratch, following our five-step formula, gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. Uh, it is uh, an audio book, it's a Kindle book, you can buy it in all good bookstores, uh, but you can also get a free copy of it and a free copy of our digital DJ gear buyer's guide. Uh, and so those two things are yours when you join Digital DJ Tips. The most important reason for joining Digital DJ Tips is that we're the world's leading DJ school with Jazzy Jeff and James Hype, DJ Angelo, Laidback Luke, uh, and all of our in-house tutors as well. Uh, we have got over 35,000 students and we've been doing this since 2010. So if you want to learn DJ, we're the place. Uh, and the best way to start is to head over to the website and to join, because when you join Digital DJ Tips, uh, we can start giving you our weekly newsletter. It's called Tuesday Tips, and it is the best place to uh, start getting up to speed with the way DJing is done today. We give away loads of free stuff in there uh, and all that kind of thing. So head over to the website and click the join logo at the top, digitaldjtips.com. Click join uh, and put your email address into this here and we will uh, give you our email every week. But more importantly, well, I say more importantly for this segment because this is how we got onto it, we'll give you a copy of this book just for joining and the gear guide. Uh, so we're here to help. We'd love you to be our latest member. Head to the website and join by clicking in that box. Thank you very much for bringing that up and giving me a chance to mention the book. I try and do it once every show because I think uh, I think we need to get it out there and hey, it's free. Right, the next question I've got here, we've got about five minutes left before I've got to go, people. Um, Mixmaster G uh, is talking to Potato uh, about the audio quality of this, the Pioneer DJ DJM A9 mixer, and whether it is as good as the V10 mixer, which is the other really flagship flag, flagship mixer from Pioneer DJ. Uh, and so you guys are chatting about that there on YouTube, but for anyone else who wants to know whether Pioneer DJ's replacement for the DJM uh, 900 Nexus 2 is uh, as good sounding as the V10. Uh, in my view, it is. In my view, it sounds slightly different. They've tuned it a little bit differently, but in my view, it is. The technology in there is better. One of the biggest improvements on the A10 over the DJM 900 Nexus 2 is the audio quality. So there's a massive leap in audio quality there, and it's, it, I think it's noticeable. So uh, I, I think if you're, you're worried about buying it because of sound quality, don't be. It's up to speed with the, uh, with the um, uh, the V10 for sure. Right, so thanks for the advice, says Charlie, to get a mini mixer. Uh, my new PV mini mixer rules. So this is something that we always advise DJs, which is if you've got a little controller, you've got a little DJ device like I've got here uh, that, you, uh, that you use day to day, then get yourself a little mixer as well. And a little mixer is, I'm seeing if I've got one handy here. I don't think I have, because the only one I've got is under the desk, actually in use at the moment, mixing the audio for what you can hear now. So a mini mixer is basically a tiny little mixer. Uh, it's about this big. Uh, they're called live mixers, but it's a, you know, live mixers are normally the massive ones that you see halfway back at a concert, yeah, where the sound engineer is, and they're getting the, the stage audio right for the audience and so on, and giving the fold back for the musicians and the singers. Uh, the, Live mixers are, are that kind of mixer. They're not DJ mixers, but you can get tiny ones. They cost about $80, right, to start, to start um, at the bottom of the, of the range. Uh, and they're just enough to take the output from, say, your DJ controller 
and maybe a microphone and maybe a backup source because there's no auxiliary input on this for instance uh, and put them all together and send them off to the main speakers. It's almost like a little Swiss army knife mixer and the beauty about having a mixer like that is that you can um, e cue the room. So what do I mean by this? Well, the output from this, so the output from here is, has only got a master volume on it, right? So you've got EQs, you've got low, mid and high on both your channels on a DJ controller. But once the audio has left all this area and gone off to the master output, there's no more EQs. So if the PA system that you're plugged into is a bit tinny or a bit bassy, or it's a bit harsh in the hi-hats, or it's kind of cutting through and making your bones rattle in the mid-range, then the only way you can correct that from your DJ mixer is by adjusting your EQs here. You have to adjust both sets of EQ on both channels or on all four channels if you're using four channels. So let's say it's a little bit lacking in bass, you might be turning the bass up. The hi-hats are a bit harsh, you might be turning those down. And the lows need a bit of a boost, you might be turning those up. You've now got a DJ with your EQ set like that all night. Now, if you're used to DJing with your EQ set like that, which you should be, then that's going to upset you, right? So if you've got a little mixer plug between your output from your main DJ controller and the PA system in a venue, you can use that tiny little mixer to correct the audio in the room by using its EQs to just do a bit of boosting or cutting of various frequencies. It's a rough and ready way of doing stuff, but we're not all DJing in great venues with wonderful sound systems and with audio engineers to help us, right? So a little mixer like that. And as well, of course, you can plug your microphone in. So if you haven't got a decent microphone socket on your unit, you can plug a microphone in to there and use that. And if you have got a backup source, as I said, there's no backup audio on this at all. There's no auxiliary input here. So if you have got a backup source that you want to use, uh, like your phone or something, you can plug that into the, uh, the second mixer as well. It's a really good way of spending less than $100 to help you um, set up all kinds of stuff. Uh, I just think uh, you will never regret buying a tiny mixer. It's one of those things. Right, I think it's time for our final question of the day. I do want to say though uh, that if you want to be helped in this way, if you're one of the people who's had your question answered today, then um, you know, you're lucky. But if you're one of the people that's answered a question and hasn't, I'm sorry, but I can't get to everyone every week. We are here every week, Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday is a live lesson, Thursday is a Q&A like this. Uh, but if you want to have your question answered for sure, you need to be in our student hub group. Because in our student hub, private student only Facebook group, we have a monthly Q&A like this, but it's hundreds, not thousands of people. Uh, and out of those people, we make sure we answer every question however long it takes. So you will get help in that group. How do you get into that group? You just be a paying student of our courses. Now you don't have to spend very much money to be a paying student. Why am I saying that? Because at the moment, well, to start with, our courses are great value and we are, um, you know, we're proud of our courses. You will always get good value when you buy one of our courses, but right now, uh, if you head over to digitaldjtips.com and you head down to the blog, you can try our Digital DJ Lab DJ and Mixing Training Program for a dollar. This is our flagship membership subscription program. This is full of training you won't find in any of our DJ courses. And if you've taken our DJ courses and want to take your DJing further, this is the place to do it. Digital DJ Lab is the place to stay up to date with everything about the way DJing is done today. Go and click on that advert and have a look. And if what you see here looks good, you can get a month for only a dollar. And one of the bonuses of doing that is it will get you into our digital DJ tips Student Hub Facebook group, it's a student only friendly place to hang out with other students and you get a Q&A like this every month where it's not only me, Steve is there as well, who is um, the co-tutor here in-house at Digital DJ Tips. We're both there to help you. Uh, I really look forward to those sessions and I do go away happy that we've managed to help everyone. We can't do that every week, unfortunately, but if you didn't get your question answered this week, come back next week, I will be here. I'm here on Tuesday and Thursday, 3 p.m. London, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern doing another two live shows. I can't wait for that. Go and take a look at Digital DJ Lab uh, currently on offer a dollar, single dollar for, uh, for a whole month. It's over on the digitaldjtips.com website. Uh, I have to go folks. Thank you for being here today uh, and I will see you again very soon. The question's actually cut out. Um, the question uh, 
chat box uh, stuff that we use has been pretty unreliable today. So, so again, sorry if I didn't get around to your question, but uh, hey, there's another week next week. Now get good, get out there, make the moments. Until next time, bye-bye.